Hey! Spoilercast! Greetings, Internet. Hello! Spoilercast is back. Yes, it is. This time it's for the episode of Legend of Korra, The Calling. The Calling. Every time I hear that name, I think of the song, that song, This Calling, by <laughs> All That Remains. And the two could not be more different. Yeah, no, not at all. But then it's like, and I hear this calling. <laughs> and then it just throws me off. But anyway, mm. we're going to talk about Legend of Korra. Korra got her mojo back. She did. She definitely did. I think... Uh... It was probably the nicest animation I've seen this season. Yeah, when she uh, finally bent the uh, the remainder of the poison out of herself. It was it was beautiful. Just the the form of the moves, like the mm. form, and then having it like where it starts out like as a far away shot, then mm. as she keeps doing it, each time it gets closer and closer in on her, uh-huh. and like you're seeing it like coming out of her, her pores and moving down her arms towards her hand, then just mm. leaving her body completely. It was really cool. Yeah, I think it was, and even in, like, all the art in this episode was really, really well done. Like, the yeah. backgrounds, and the, uh, the swamp, especially the tree, the tree was awesome. Yeah, the ones, once again, back to the Banyan Grove tree mm. that we saw back in the, uh, the, uh, second season of Avatar, The Last Airbender. Mm. It was where the, uh, swamp bender lead guy, Hugh, Hugh or whatever, Hugh, <laughs> took him, so... I like the fact that the show is not afraid to keep going back to the same places and reusing them in new ways. Right. It's really, I think it's cool. Uh, you know, this whole episode deals with, it's really, it came really quick. Mm-hmm. I felt it was really quick because, you know, she was getting trained by by Toph and then like it was just kind of like everything that was happening wasn't doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah, well it got to the point where, you know, she kept resisting Toph's efforts. Mm-hmm. She couldn't let go of the past. Right. And I like that this episode dealt with that. It's like it was like a literal weight she's carrying around with her. Mm-hmm. Not just the poison in her blood, but then also the spiritual elemental weight right. of these past battles. Mm-hmm. And that there was that, you know, metaphor that she's being so fixated on the past that it's the same thing as having poison in your veins. It just you can't get pat. You have to get rid of all that mm. before you can move on. Right. And I like the notion that Toph gave her that you know you could learn from your enemies because they all had noble goals, but because they weren't in balance, they went too far. Right. And then end up causing suffering. Mm. But you know, Amon was about equality for everybody. Mm. Uh, Unalak was about bringing back the spirits, mm-hmm. and <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> Sorry, <laughs> this is be edited out, no problem. Yeah, and then uh, uh, what's his name? What was the last season? Uh, I can't remember his freaking name, but I know. Yeah, he was he was all about freedom. He was about freedom. Yeah. God, I can't remember his name. Zahir. Zahir. Well, I can't remember this shit after. Mm-hmm. When I could sound so much smarter if I knew if I remembered his name. Before I went, <laughs> do, 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 do. I even coughed to try to find myself Remember, some time. That's what I figured you were doing. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh weird. man, oh, sorry about that. <laughs> oh, he was, yeah. Duh. Anyway. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, it's a really cool notion. It was all about metaphor. This whole episode, I think, was. Yeah. You know what I mean? We had well on the chorus side of on things. On the chorus side, yeah. There was there was the side of things with the uh, Airbender kids mm. that was a little less about metaphor and just more of a regular kind of you know uh, the learning, comedy romp. Yeah, l- l- to l- find l- learn your lesson. You know, mm. the what you know the lesson of family and teamwork. Mm. But the Silver Cora was definitely the. The, the, the meteor stuff. It was the meat of it. It was, you know... When they set off uh, last episode to find her, I thought it was going to take a little longer. But then you got to remember, we've got 12 episodes. Yeah, 12, 13, I think. Thir- 13 episodes and to get through. And that was already so the gotta, fourth one. Right, so it's like, we got to get this movie. Yeah, we and we, we kind of speculated that it was going to get wrapped up. Like, the, mm. the, the poison stuff, and she was going to get found this episode mm. because you, you have to have Korra and your main an- antagonist meet up before the halfway point of the season. You, know, right. you can't have keep them apart for that long. Right. So, and it looks like next episode, that's directly where it's going. Mm. Because we know Kuvira is moving on Zalfu. It's the last free, the last, not free, but the last city that has, has to declare an allegiance. Under, yeah, under her power, so. I'd like to see the, the rest of the episodes just be the Battle of Zalfu. <laughs> well, I have a feeling that you know. Korra's gonna charge back in, mm. probably get defeated. 
Well, and she'll probably after, try to take it political first, I'm sure. Well, I think whatever, no matter what she does, no matter mm. what approach, it's not going to be successful. Right. And then she's going to have to reassess and reattack. Right. You know. But we talk, you know, so with Korra, and I love, yeah, I, I hope this isn't the last we see of Toph, because she's just so much fun. Just mm. her giving the Avatar shit nonstop is yeah. just so good. <laughs> just constantly whining about the Avatar. Cora's boards. Like, why don't you tell me a story? What about the time you taught Aang how to Earth Bend? She's like, what's there to tell? Yeah. He, I, I threw some rocks at the Avatar. He he whined and Sokka fell in a hole. hole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the greatest telling of that story. Because what, it's, it is what happened. That is exactly what happened. What about when you fought the Fire Lord? It, it was, was hot. <laughs> I think I was on a blimp and there might have been a big turtle. <laughs> and there was a big turtle somewhere in there, too. I mean, this is awesome. So you're terrible at telling stories. <laughs> you're terrible at listening to them. <laughs> it's really just the perfect dynamic. So I'm, I'm gonna miss that if, if we mm. don't see her again this season. But I'm pretty. I'm sure we'll probably see her again at some point. We'll have to. I'm hoping so. Since this is like the last, you know, mm-hmm. the last one of the core series, I'm hoping she comes back. I'd like to see. I'd like to see Sokka. But, he's, he's dead. Oh, is it, Saki is dead. I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, he, he, he's dead. Yeah, I forgot S- that. Sorry. Oh, well, but you know, like... Mr. Buzz killing someone. Right <laughs> but, you know, it would be nice to see her come back, you know, and... Right. Uh, the stuff with the kids, you mm. know, while it wasn't, like, as heavy or as, you know, contextual mm. as uh, the stuff with uh, Toph and Korra, I did like the fact that it was basically about Icky. Mm. You know, Icky. We, we haven't really seen much of her. She's always... You know, the she's the middle child has that middle child syndrome where, like, the older one gets all the responsibility, but mm-hmm. the younger one is like gets more attention. Mm-hmm. So she's always like stuck there and is never included in either way. Right. But we really saw that here, where she's actually really resourceful, really clever, mm-hmm. and fiercely independent. Right. You know, she gets captured and then ends up charming her her captors into mm-hmm. giving her all the information she, she needs. needs. Yeah. And, and feeding then letting her, her go. Yeah. yeah. And then letting her go. Like, like, they, they feel so strongly for her, they end up taking her side. And they're mm-hmm. like, originally they were going to turn her into Kavira to get themselves promotions. Mm-hmm. And then she had it turn around to where they were willing to, you know, march into hell for her, mm-hmm. to her sake. It's like, it was ridiculous. The guy's like, you have such a big heart, you're an important part of our team. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, she's like, can get out of those binds at any time. Mm-hmm. She kind of constantly was getting her arms out of the ropes to, like, wipe her face and <laughs> point at stuff. Getting them to feed her macaroons. Yeah, macaroons. The macaroons. Uh, you know, Milo is being Milo. Mm. Everywhere. Just the whole episode, just constantly doing the, being the whole overachieving, you know, loudmouth guy. Has a little uh, lady friend in one of the cities. Mm. I wonder if that's going to come back into play at some point in the later I episode. sincerely doubt it. I don't think so. It's just kind of yeah. a thing to add to his character. Yeah, it, it was kind of it was one of those things where it's like, you could see that awkward boy thing mm. but he was also kind of a smooth operator I mean it's like what should I call you besides beautiful <laughs> I was like damn like he's a straight Mac <laughs> but yeah I think the thing with the kids it, it was nice because it did let us see more sides of them you know well and we rarely see the three of them together together yeah and like their dynamic we always mm. see them in the context of the rest of the family or, like, other characters like Hora. Mm. So to see the three of them on their own and, like, the way they interact. I mean, for anyone that's had siblings, you could recognize the patterns and a lot of the behavior. Right. It was actually, it was hauntingly familiar at times. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, oh my god, I know exactly how they feel. <laughs> or I know how exactly how Iki feels, or I know how Janora feels. Milo, not so much. Yeah, no, Milo's just out there, man. Yeah. He's he, the baby. They're throwing, throwing the food in the river so they can hunt, <laughs> hunt for their food, even though they're vegetarians. Yeah, we're vegetarians. We don't hunt. Brings back some real bad berries <laughs> with the most uh, nightmare inducing face. <laughs> eating them, puking them. Oh my god. That face. Mm. I saw that and I was just like, <laughs> no moss. Yeah, I mean, uh, the whole dynamic with everything, once they figured out where she was and, you know, she saw him and everything with using the tree. Yeah. And, like, the first time she sees the buffalo, she starts crying. I think that was, that was really telling. That, like, she left because she felt incomplete, but she really needed the people in her life. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And her she her idea that. of going back to Public City to recharge her batteries was actually mm. a really good one. Right. But then she got scared off by... 
the ghosts of her past. Mm-hmm. You know, she let she it still was self defeating. Right. She defeated herself, even though that was actually probably the best place for her, being around Asami and Mako and you know probably not bullying. He's probably gone at mm-hmm. that point already. Right. But being around Tenzin and the family, and then them, it would have helped her because. She, you know, she was kind of being treated like a porcelain doll at her house with her parents. Right. So that really well, probably would have been the answer. It probably would have helped her move along much quicker. But at the same time, she, it's, a, it's a journey. She had to make this journey herself. Right. Like, she couldn't just, you know, w- like walk into the welcoming arms and then have everything be cured. Like, right. She had to struggle to realize what the real problem was. That she was carrying all this stuff around from the past mm-hmm. and letting it affect her. That she was, in her mind, she was still fighting the battles. Mm-hmm. The, you know, the battles weren't over. They had, they didn't end. Right. And she had to finally, fit, you know, end the battles basically inside her to let go of all this stuff from the past. And to you know, part of letting go was understanding. She had to understand why these people did what they did. And she was able to do that, and then she was able to kind of let go finally. Mm-hmm. And obviously, they just being the show it is, they did it in a very visual manner, right? With poison literally just coming out of her body and floating away. Mm-hmm. But I think really the way all these episodes are starting to like line up together, and the way everything's tying together, it's been such a. It's only been four episodes, but it feels like a lot has happened. Mm-hmm. A lot has happened in four episodes. And the fact that the show is paced so well and you don't feel like anything's being rushed on you, mm-hmm. but you feel like there's a really good steady clip. Mm-hmm. You know, there's nothing that there, there's nothing happening that's not important. Like, even the stuff that felt like maybe in for episode one, we were like, we don't know what the significance of it is. It's all starting to make sense now. Right, it's, everything's tying back together. And I'm really interested to see where the episodes after this are going to go into, yeah. that, into that regard, too. Me, too. Very much so. And she was finally able to let go of this stuff. She's still going to have to have conflict that she's going to have to overcome, you know? So Yeah, it's like she finally put to rest the old battles, but now she's got a brand new one she's got to fight. Right. So I'm curious to see where it's going to go. Uh, next episode, obviously, is going to be setting up the Kuvira Korra standoff, mm-hmm. you know, whatever their conflicts, however it's going to end up being, or you know, it's how it's going to go. Right. Mm-hmm. But we'll get into that one when we get to the next episode. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and sign off for this spoiler cast. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the com. you can always find all our stuff. Find us on Twitter and Facebook. If you right. want to leave comments for us, let us know your thoughts on these episodes. Mm-hmm. But uh, on behalf of... On behalf, on behalf, on behalf of podcast alone, <laughs> I am Doc Gaetan, and I am Friar Dan, and we will see you next time on the Spoiler Cast. <laughs> see you next time. Guys.